Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can enhance the natural light of your photography inside of Photoshop. This is a comprehensive tutorial so I'm going to walk you through the entire editing process. If you're short on time I'll provide timestamps so you can skip to the relevant part for you. However if you do want to follow along I'm going to leave a link to the image below. I'm going to be sharing a lot of tips and tricks so I guarantee if you're a beginner and stay through the whole tutorial you're going to learn a lot. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. This is the image we're going to be working with and I've chosen it for a very specific reason. You see as a raw file there's nothing special about it but with a few subtle edits we can create something which looks more visually engaging and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Here's a before and after and as you can see there's a huge difference. So the goal here is to enhance the natural light but before we do that we need to edit the whole image first and you'll see why later. To begin with, I'm going to hit Command J to create a copy of our layer, as this is always good practice in case we make any mistakes. Then I'm going to remove any distracting elements such as the windows on the left, the drain in the foreground, and then these panels on the right. Because these aren't focal points and I'm going to be darkening the sides, I'm going to remove them with the Spot Healing Brush tool. Hit J on your keyboard and simply paint over these areas. As you can see, Photoshop does a great job at removing these. With that out of the way, we're going to get our crop tool by hitting C on our keyboard and then we're going to crop this to a 4x5 aspect ratio so when we export it, it's in the correct format for Instagram. Now we can start to add our adjustment layers. The goal here is to create more contrast between the light and dark areas. I want our subject to almost look like a silhouette. To achieve this, I'm going to be stacking our adjustment layers and making small changes with each one we add. Go to your adjustment layers and then select curves. If you haven't used the histogram before, it's really simple. Essentially what you have is the blacks in the bottom left and this represents the areas of your image that are completely black meaning that there's no detail. Then we have the shadows around this area, midtones in the middle, highlights here and then whites at the top. We want to add more contrast into the image so what we need to do is drop the shadows like this and as you can see that darkens everything. But what we don't want is our subject to be too dark as she's the focal point so we need to mask out that curves layer. Let's zoom in and select the mask and then hit B to get our brush tool. With a soft brush selected and black as our foreground colour, we're going to paint over our subject. You can see as we do this, it's hard to know exactly where we've masked. So here's a quick tip. If you hit the forward slash button on your keyboard, you'll be able to clearly see the areas you're masking, which is really helpful to see if we've gone too far in some areas. If you have, you can hit X on your keyboard and this will switch from black to white and then we can paint back these areas. To brighten our subject, I'm going to create a copy of the layer by hitting Command J on our keyboard and then invert this by hitting Command I. Now every adjustment we make will only affect our subject, so I'm going to bring up the shadows slightly like this. That's looking good, but these areas on the side are still too bright for my liking. Add another curves layer and this time we're going to bring down the highlights like this. Then with a large soft brush at say 3000 pixels and black as our foreground colour, I'm going to paint a line down the middle like this. That's looking good, it's now time to add some colour into the image. Go to your adjustment layers and then add a hue saturation layer. I'm going to bring up the saturation to 30 but the problem we have now is the colours on the ground are too prominent, we've got a lot of blues and purples showing through. To fix this all we need to do is repeat the same process but this time for the floor. Make sure you have the mask selected on your saturation layer and then just simply paint over the floor. With that done, we want to mute the colours so we're going to hit Command J on our keyboard to create a copy of the saturation layer and then invert this by hitting Command I and bring in the saturation down to minus 50. Now we can begin to enhance the natural light. To do this, I'm going to be using these two free images I found online. There's going to be a link in the description below if you want to download them. Let's add our first image and then right click this layer and convert it into a smart object. Then change the blend mode to screen and let's scale this up into position right at the top. Add a mask and then start painting out the areas we don't want. The idea here is to make it subtle so let's get rid of any obvious sun rays. Then we need to repeat the same process for the second layer but we're going to do it a little bit different this time. Let's bring this layer into the composition and then right click again and convert it into a smart object. This time we're going to click inside the smart object and then what we need to do is change the coloration of this layer. So go to your adjustment layers and then add a hue saturation layer and make sure you check colorize and then we can adjust the hue to match the image. 
Once we've done that, we need to hit Command S to save the smart object, and then we can jump back into our working image. Now we need to repeat the same process, so change the blend mode to screen, and then simply just mask out the areas that we don't want. And again, we're going to try and make sure it's subtle. Once that's done, we're ready to add our dreamlike glow effect. We need to start by compressing all our layers into one. With the top layer selected, hit Command Shift and E on your keyboard, and then all our layers below will be compressed into one single layer. With that layer selected, go to Image and then Apply Image. Make sure your options are the same as mine with the blend mode set to multiply. Hit OK and then turn the blend mode to screen. Next, go to Filter, Blur and then Gaussian Blur. Set the radius to 24 and hit OK. If we add a layer mask to this, we can paint back some of the areas where the light is bleeding into our shadows or on our subject, like so. And I think we're done, of course. There are many more small tweaks you can make, but this is in a pretty good place. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you found this helpful. Happy to answer any questions you have in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day.